Hello guys, this is TheHacker13, and in this video I'll be showing you on how to downgrade your iPod Touch or iPhone from firmware 3.1.3 to firmware 3.1.2. Now this is very easy and simple to do. Basically, if you bought your iPod Touch or iPhone and it came with 3.1.3 firmware, then this will not work. However, if your iPod Touch or iPhone came with a firmware that is lower than 3.1.3, then this will work. For example, my iPod Touch 2G came with firmware 2.2.1 when I first bought it, so this will work. But my friend's iPhone, when he first bought it, the iPhone 3GS, the newest one, came with 3.1.3 firmware, so this will not work for him. So once you have verified that you have the correct device for this video, you can move on to the next step, which is opening your browser. And you want to go to this website called felixbruns.de slash iPod slash firmware. And obviously, the link to this website will be in the description down below. Basically, under iPhone and iPod Touch, you want to hit the little arrow, find your device, and make sure it says 3.1.2. So I have an iPod Touch 2G 3.1.2. Then you want to hit download. And the download may come up as a zip file, and if it does, download a zip, an unzipping file program, such as WinRAR, and unzip the zipped file and drag the IPSW or firmware file onto your desktop. Once you have done this, you can move on to the next step. So as you can see, I have the 3.1.2 firmware file on my desktop. So the next step is putting your iPod Touch or iPhone into DFU mode, which can be difficult for some people. If you cannot follow the instructions I say verbally and show you in the video, then I'll put some written instructions below in the description. So basically, you want to make sure a USB cable is plugged in and ready to go. So first I'm going to explain it to you. What you're going to do is you're going to hold down the power button and slide to power off. And then what you're going to do is you're going to hold down the home and power button for 10 seconds. Well basically what you're going to do is once the device is off, at the same time, you're going to plug in your iPod Touch or iPhone. You're also going to hold down the Home and Power button. So you're going to hold down the Home and Power button at the same time and also at the same time plug it in with the USB cable. And then after 10 seconds, you take your finger off the Power button but leave it on the Home button. So basically this is way too hard to do with one hand, so I'm going to have to show you like this. So I'm going to hold down the power button. I'm going to slide the power off. And this may need to, you may need to do this a few times to get it perfectly right. So I'm going to plug it in and at the same time hold down the home and power button. So one, two, three. Now leave down the home button. Now let go to the power button already. Now if you did this correctly, your iPod Touch or iPhone screen will stay black. If an iTunes logo with a USB plug pops up on your screen, then you have not done it right and you must redo the process. So once it's plugged in in DFU mode, which once again the screen should be black, iTunes should pop up and say iTunes is detected in iPod in recovery mode. You must restore this iPod before it can be used with iTunes. So basically it's not in recovery mode, it's actually in DFU mode, but iTunes won't recognize that. So you want to hit OK. And now, um, I'm not sure what the button is on Mac, but I'm pretty sure it's the option key. But for Windows, it's the Shift key. So what you want to do is you want to hold the Shift key button on your keyboard and at the same time, click Restore. So I'm going to show you from this angle. So I'm going to hold down the Shift key, which is right here, and click Restore, which is right there. So ready? I'm holding down shift, I'm clicking restore. 
So basically, just hold down shift once again, the shift key on your keyboard, and then hit restore. For max, you hold down the option key, which I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure it's the option key. Hold down the option key on your keyboard and click restore. And then a window should pop up. And now, for that firmware file you saved on your desktop, you want to hit desktop, and you want to select the firmware file, and hit open, and then hit restore. And now it'll say extracting software, and it'll do a few things. Now I'm just going to let it sit here while it does it. To show you guys the whole process. So this may or may not work with the newest iTunes 9.1, so I'm recommending not upgrading to iTunes 9.1. So if someone who has iTunes 9.1 and tries and uses this, please report in the comment section below if it worked for you. Because right now I believe I'm running iTunes 9.0. So your iPod touch your iPhone screen may go white while doing this. Actually, I'm pretty sure it will go white. And basically, if you don't feel like watching all this boring stuff, then you can just fast forward to the end to see just the important info for whether it worked. And so as you can see, it is almost finish. finished. And on your iPod to your iPhone, it should look something like this. And I also just want to let you say that there is no need to do this if your iPod touch or iPhone is perfectly jailbroken on firmware 3.1.3. So basically my iPod touch was already jailbroken on firmware 3.1.3. And the only reason I did this was to make a tutorial out of it to help you guys. Um, so basically, once it's finished, it will say this. And then it will close after 10 seconds. And then it will show your iPod Touch or iPhone. I'm um, just rebooting. And then it will show this right here. See, this is the thing you don't want to get. Uh, when trying to go in DFU mode, as you just saw, that picture with the iTunes logo on the USB cable. And see, as you now can see, I go to Settings and General About. As you can see, it says 3.1.2. So before I had 3.1.3, now I have 3.1.2. If this video works for you guys, please thumbs up or like it, the video, whatever you want to call it. Leave a comment and subscribe. Also subscribe to my second YouTube channel called App Store Corner and follow me on Twitter.